So this is my first attempt at uh, recording anything using OBS. Um, I do realize that uh, there's going to be some eye contact problems because of where the camera is versus where the OBS control center is. But hey, eye contact issues is kind of what Autism Awareness Month is about, right? Uh, so again, I am not a medical doctor. I work in geology, so unless your kid is made of felspar, don't take medical advice from me. But uh, I was reading through doing research uh, for Autism Awareness Month and, and the videos I'm doing on it when I came across this paper that really caught my eye. Um, and it's from, um, I believe it was done at Yale Medical School. Um, and it's 2015. I don't know if any research has been done in the six years since this was published. I also want to warn you that this is behind a paywall, and I had to use my uh, academic credentials to get to it. So you really couldn't um, get to it on your own unless you went to a university library and used their access. So uh, I'm just going to talk about it in brief. So... This was a nonverbal autistic person who was engaging in self-injurious behavior and injurious behavior toward others. So this is a single case study where uh, the experimenters administered a transdermal nicotine through a patch uh, and it seemed to calm him. And I will read specifically from the conclusion in the discussion section. Uh, so, again, I won't be able to look at the camera and read this at the same time. Here we report a case of a hospitalized adolescent patient with ASD treated with transdermal nicotine for the specific indication of aggression toward self and others. This patient was admitted due to the aggression unmanageable outside of the inpatient unit and showed improvement over the course of his hospitalization. This, peer, this patient appeared to display reduced aggression after uh, transdermal nicotine administration. This was evidenced by a significant reduction in the frequency of emergency, I'm not going to try to pronounce that because the print is too small, uh, physical holds with no further need for four-point restraint after treatment with transdermal nicotine was initiated. While this case cannot establish the efficacy of nicotine in treating aggression associated with ASD, these findings, with no observed adverse effect as well as reduced need for restraint and antipsychotic medication, substantiate the need for further, more rigorous study. The mechanisms as to how nicotine might improve specific core symptoms uh, is not yet understood. Well, this is a thing that uh, I can give these researchers a whole bit of understanding on. See, as both an autistic person and a heavy smoker, in fact, I'm smoking right now, I can tell you that, so generally aggressive behavior and meltdown behavior come as a consequence of sensory overload. And then that's more common in young autistic people. As we get older, it more li it's more likely to manifest in the form of autistic burnout, which is just, just come being completely drained of energy and unable to do any more processing. And I've discovered that when I'm in burnout and I smoke, I feel better and my time to recovery feels quicker. Uh, so I'm guessing that it would have a similar effect uh, for meltdowns and aggression is that nicotine is acting as a kind of chemical equalizer, which allows for the reduction of, of the symptoms that are brought about by uh, overstimulation. Now, uh, I've been an advocate and a fan of medicinal nicotine, medicinal tobacco use for a long time. Um, I 
at one point was diagnosed with clinical depression. Uh, they said my, my levels of serotonin were basically unmeasurable. And uh, so I was put on the standard treatment of Lexapro plus uh, Xanax. And of course, in order to help me cope with the dulling effects of Xanax and the, like, manic overstimulation caused by the Lexapro, I found that smoking helped to uh, manage my symptoms and keep me on an even keel. And that was just, it was, it was just so useful. So I have been a supporter of medicinal tobacco for a long time. And again, this is one study and one anecdote. Uh, but I think that, you know, my, my message out there to medical research is, is look into this. Uh, I mean, this is, this is so much, so much better than, uh, than ABA. You know, stop, stop wasting time with ABA. ABA doesn't work. ABA will traumatize your child. On the other hand, and this isn't even smoking, this is a patch. Uh, if... If this can work uh, to help deal with the more overwhelming symptoms that autism can provide, it's certainly true in my case, then I think this may be really useful as a, a future uh, direction of research and treatment for, um, for people with ASD. So, with that said... Um, I'm going to do a couple more of these sort of short uh, autism vlog posts throughout the month when they catch my interest. But also I'm, I'm sort of being crushed again at work, so I'm trying to balance everything out. Anyway, that's all for now, folks. Take care.